With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Friday, May 27th, 2016. The Flint City Council has had their powers returned. Jaquanda Johnson of the Flint Journal reports that in a special meeting yesterday, the Receivership Transition Advisory Board unanimously voted in favor of restoring their power. Under the terms of the agreement, however, the state-appointed board has the option to remove their power again within a 90-day period if they see fit. Governor Snyder and Mayor Karen Weaver have both said that they support the council's power being restored. The RTAB members stressed the importance of the council and Mayor Weaver working together to move the city forward, and City Council President Kerry Nelson says that both parties need to put their personal issues aside to be able to handle the immediate needs of the city. U.S. Representative Dan Kildee of Flint called on Congress to remain in session ahead of the upcoming holiday weekend in order to work on funding for the city of Flint. Roberto Acosta of the Flint Journal reports that Representative Kildee was joined on the steps of the U.S. Capitol building by several members of Congress to, as the representative said, do your job. Representative Kildee acknowledged that the federal government did not cause the water crisis in Flint, but noted that Washington has yet to take any action to help the city for more than two years. Michigan Senators Debbie Stabenow and Gary Peters announced in April that they introduced a funding package for Flint to be included in the Water Resources Development Act, which is currently being debated in the Senate. Governor Snyder is asking that a state investigation related to the Flint water crisis be suspended. Ron Fonger of the Flint Journal reports that the request is being made after Michigan Attorney General Bill Schuette and the U.S. Department of Justice told the governor that the investigation could get in the way of the ongoing criminal investigation. Two months ago, the governor asked state inspectors to investigate how the Department of Health and Human Services handled the emergency. Barbara McQuaid with the Justice Department says that while they are sure that it was unintended, the results of the internal investigation may be an obstruction of justice. McQuaid says that statements obtained in the administrative investigation are considered compelled statements and the Fifth Amendment would prohibit their use, which poses a significant risk to the federal criminal investigation. Michigan lawmakers agreed to a tentative budget framework that keeps the $165 million for Flint intact. Emily Lawler on MLive.com reports that cuts to other proposals were made, but Senate Majority Leader Arlen Meekoff said on Wednesday that while lawmakers are still working on the details of the budget, the framework keeps the Flint funding in place. Some of the funding taking cuts include eliminating an unintentional $80 million tax break for auto insurers, a $40 million trim of the K-12 budget, and a reduction to a proposed increase in university funding. Despite the cut, the K-12 funding does leave the proposed $60 to $120 per pupil increase unscathed. Senator John Cornyn of Texas introduced an amendment this week that would greatly increase the surveillance power of the FBI. Reuters reports that this expansion of power would broaden the FBI's authority to use secretive subpoenas, known as national security letters, to include certain aspects of all electronic communications. Senators Patrick Leahy of Vermont and Mike Lee of Utah oppose this expansion of power, noting that the expansion of the secretive policing of Americans runs contrary to public privacy and would undercut their own bill that would require police organizations to obtain a search warrant before asking tech companies to hand over customer data. Currently, federal agencies do not need a warrant to access emails or other digital communications older than 180 days as the law considers them abandoned by the owner. These NSLs have been in place since the 1970s, but since September 2001, these secretive orders that invariably come with a gag order have increasingly been used in place of due process. According to a government transparency report in 2015, requests for customer records from technology companies like Google and Microsoft via an NSL increased 50% over 2014, from 33,000 to nearly 50,000. The Senate postponed a vote on the bill that included this amendment so that lawmakers can review the proposed authority. And finally, Clark Hughes on MLive.com provided a friendly reminder for the upcoming summer months. Medical experts are warning people to never leave children or pets unattended in a closed vehicle as temperatures can dramatically rise in a short time. In a video on MLive.com, a car was parked on asphalt on a 79-degree day with a thermometer inside. Within six minutes, the demonstration showed that the temperature inside the closed car rose from 80 to 106 degrees Fahrenheit. A bill in Lansing is currently being considered to make leaving pets unattended in a closed car a crime, and under Michigan Penal Code, it is illegal to leave an unattended child in a vehicle for a period of time that poses an unreasonable risk. 
For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.